Welcome to our Inventor Series. We're about to do the next part, in fact, probably one of the most challenging parts of our caster wheel project. It is the axle support. It is a little different. It requires a multiple extrudes, a couple of holes, and a couple of callouts. So we're going to begin as simply as we can. In this case, I'm going to simply draw in a rectangle. I'm just going to start up here, middle of nowhere for right now. I'm going to apply some dimensions to this. Now, our base plate on this has to be, for this part, exactly 3.25 across. And the vertical distance on this is supposed to be 0.375 or 3 eighths of an inch. Now here's where we get a little more entertaining. We're going to create a circle that is dead center on the axis of the center of this. So I'm going to come down here and I'm just going to throw in a circle. Now that circle will represent the arc or the piece we're going to do in just a moment. A couple of things we need to do with this. We need to control its location relative to the rest of this part. It is exactly two inches below that edge right there. The other portion of it that we have to control is its radius. It has a radius of 0.75 or a diameter of 1.5. So if I type in 1.5, I have the correct diameter. Now, these dimensions are holding it in place and making sure it's in the right location. I've already, when I created it, if you notice, that I not created the green spot right here and followed it straight down with a dotted line. That is constraining it so it lines up with that point, which is the center point. Now, next, I have to create a line that comes off and is truly tangent to this part. To do that, I simply get my green mark right on the corner where I want to attach, bring it down here, and notice my icons. I have a, and you really can't see it very well, right under my cursor, there is a tangent, a circle with a line icon there. Once I've got that, I can then simply trim this piece out and this piece out. Yeah, oh, why is it not letting me trim that one? Mm, well, it's because I've constrained to that dimension right there. Okay, I've made a mistake. I need to go back and do some changes here. So we're going to fix a couple things here. We're going to get rid of a couple of dimensions. We are going to now try to trim this piece, which it should allow me to do. And then I will dimension this vertical. And then I will dimension from this point here to this point here. And it should remain the same which it is, we're good to go. I should now then be able to trim out this piece and I've got my backing plate for this. Once I'm done with that, I will simply hit the finish button and now I will extrude this part. To extrude this, it's not as thick as it looks. In reality, it's only 3 eighths of an inch thick and I'm gonna type it in as a fraction this time instead of in as a decimal so that you can see that it works both ways. So I've just simply typed in 3 eighths, there he is. Now. Next thing I need to do, I should probably create the hole that goes right here for this piece. But to do that, it actually has to have an, it bosses out or sticks out, so I need to create an extrusion first. So in this case, I'm simply going to go and I'm going to sketch on that surface again. I'm going to get a circle tool, and if I bring my cursor right here on that green dot that represents the center of this, I can click on there, and if I drag it straight out, it matches that radius which it has to do to make this work. I don't have to apply any dimensions at this point, it is fully constrained as it is. So I then finish that sketch, I extrude that one piece I've got, and it extrudes all of one eighth of an inch, or .125. As you noticed before, I used fractions last time, this time I'm using decimals, doesn't matter, same thing. Now, next step, I'm gonna rotate around to the back of my project. I need to make the L bracket of this, or the actually mounting portion of this bracket. So I'm simply going to click on this surface. I'm going to tell it to create a sketch on it. I'm going to create a rectangular sketch that goes from corner here to corner there, which it will require it or force it to have the right size because it, it is 3 eighths of an inch thick here, and that's what that vertical line is right there. Again, it is fully constrained at this point. There's nothing else I can do to it. So I will simply finish this sketch. I will go to my extrude feature. I will pick on that rectangle I just made, but now I need to think for just a moment. I need this to stick out a grand total from this edge here to the front edge of this part, one and a half inches. Well, this is three eighths of an inch, so I can either tell this thing to extrude an inch and an eighth, or I can tell it to go 
1.5 minus 0.375. And either way, it gets me the exact right dimension. Now, before I go any farther, I'm going to use the fillet command right here to create a fillet on this edge and on this edge. This fillet needs to be present. It is a half inch radius, so I'm just simply changing my radius right here to be 0.5 and it creates that feature just exactly as I needed it. Now, the only other things we need to do is we need to punch a couple of holes through this. So, we're gonna start by rotating this part up a little bit so that we can see this surface right here. I'm going to go to my create a sketch and it's gonna turn it flat to me and I'm gonna zoom in on it. Now, our holes go right on these center points right here and we're going a little longer than we normally do but we're going to hurry and punch these holes and be done with this. I'm gonna put a uh, point right there and a point right there. That's all I need to do as long as they share that center point, which they do, they are fully constrained. I will then use my hole feature here to create this hole. It is a counterboard hole, so for my list right here, I'm going to pick a counterboard right there. And looking at my feature over here, it is 0 .370, 0 0.375 all the way through, and it is a 0.625 for the counter. So this upper portion right here it needs to be a different number. So we're going to tell this right here to be 0 0.625. It is going to have a depth of an eighth of an inch, which is 0 0.125. And the through hole needs to be 0 0.375. That's all taken from my spec sheet, again, that we got from Wasatch High's Gary Roberts uh, for this project. So that should be everything I need. I simply hit OK. It does it all for me. Next thing, I'm going to rotate back around here. I'm going to pick on this surface and I'm going to punch my last hole through it. So, I've got two ways to do this. I can either do it as a cut or I can do it as a hole. I'm going to do this as a cut. So I simply put a center mark, you go to the center mark here, draw a circle, and then I'm going to come back to my dimension tool right here and I'm going to apply a dimension to that to make sure I have it the right size, which in this case is one inch exactly. I'm done with that feature, it's there. I'm gonna use my extrude, I'm gonna use this hole right here, and I'm gonna tell it to cut, which it goes back to what I typed in last time, which is fine with me. It goes farther than I need. I'm simply gonna go okay. Last thing I have to do is apply some fillet to this. There is a filleted edge in a few locations. We're gonna rotate this guy around and up a little bit. Okay, there is a fillet along this edge right here that is if I'm reading the right directions right, which I know I am because I'm looking straight at it, it is 0.125. It goes there, it goes across this surface here, it goes across this surface here, and it also goes across that surface right there that I really cannot see. Are there any others looking at it? I know there is one that goes around that. And that is it from our drawing sheet. So once I've got all those, I hit the OK button. It's all filleted. We're good to go. Thank you. We'll show you our next part in a few minutes.